Hey guys, this is Angel back with another edition of the Go On It podcast. And today I get a chance to speak with, uh, I believe, who is going to be one of the top MMA prospects in the next year. Uh, he is a Cowboy alumni. He is Kyle Kreshmer. How you doing, Kyle? I'm doing good, man. I just I just got to the Midwest uh, last night, so uh, I'm preparing for this fight I have this Saturday. So for listeners of the Go On It podcast, Kyle, can you tell... Um, give give uh, the listeners a little background info on who Kyle Crutchmer is, where where he began his uh, his journey in life and whatnot, and talk a little bit about um, your past. Well, I'm from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. I grew up wrestling um, at Tulsa Union High School. Um, I was a two time state champ. Then from there, I went to. Uh, Oklahoma State, where I wrestled under John Smith for five years. Um, there, I was a two-time All-American, as long as uh, I also won the University Nationals in Akron, um, and also a two-time Big 12 champ. And then, when I got done with that, I was recruited into MMA by uh, American Kickboxing Academy out in San Jose by Daniel Cormier and Hop Mendez. Perfect. I think you nailed it. I think... Uh... I think a lot of people already know who you are, but for listeners out there, I just had to give them a little background info. So, Kyle, um, how you been, man? What what's uh, what's it like fight week? You know, this is your first MMA fight. Um, how does it feel transitioning from the sport you love into you know a more dynamic sport and dangerous sport? Um, the transition was hard at first. Not gonna lie, it was uh, you know once you once you get good at something, it's hard to. Uh, let it go right um but as far as the wrestling went you know i just felt like me and me and the sport just had its time and uh i'm someone that wanted a, some a different challenge a more extreme challenge and uh so i transitioned over to uh mixed martial arts and from then on man i just i, I fell in love with learning and fell in love with um the passion it took to get to where um you gotta get good or you'll get hurt so right um I just took it serious, man. I've taken it very serious since I got out there. Not very many games for me. And, uh, yeah, I got my debut this this Saturday. It's been eight and a half months in the training. And uh, I, f- I feel like I'm, I'm pretty prepared. So Awesome. Now, after your uh, last year wrestling in college, uh, how fast and how quickly did you transition into MMA? MMA? Was it just um, a couple months or did you go right into it? So I actually, right when I, I uh, got done with NCAAs, I got contacted by Uriah Faber and Daniel Cormier. So I, I went out there right when I graduated college. I left the next day, um, flew out to both places to kind of a recruiting visit, I guess you'd say. Um, and, you know, I like both of the gyms. Um, but I still wanted to compete in the U.S. trials and U.S. Open. Um, I was kind of just one of those things that I've always promised myself that I would wrestle in the highest level tournament we can in the United States. And, uh, yeah, so after that, I transitioned pretty quickly into MMA after the trials. Awesome, man. So what's it like getting a, getting a call from D.C. and Uriah asking you to come out and start training? What What's that feel like for you personally? You know, obviously it makes you feel pretty good knowing that uh, guys that, that are very successful in their, in their sport, you know, they think that you have something that uh, – that can go a long way in it so you know just a very humbling experience for them to be able to uh fly me out and take care of me for a couple days and and you know show want and uh desire to get me out there so man it felt it actually felt really good um very humbling awesome so let's let's talk about uh right now let's talk more about the mma side how is uh so you you mentioned that it's it's been a difficult transition right off the bat, but now you're just starting to just ease your way into things. What's been the what's been the easiest transition as far as wrestling to MMA goes? I mean, besides the wrestling aspect, what's been the easiest for you? Um, just the whole grappling thing, you know, and like the jujitsu slash wrestling. Yeah. Um, with my wrestling background, it um, it does help. But at first, you know, I was getting caught in chokes and things. So it's just kind of, you know, fine-tuning some different things and 
going over, uh, you know, what not to do when you take someone down, where not to have your neck, things like that. That was a pretty easy transition. Um, as far as the boxing goes, you know, I'm still not 100%, obviously. I've only been doing it for a year. Guys have been doing it for 15, 16 years. But I picked up on it pretty quick, too. But as far as the transition, I, I think the whole grappling sc scenario came more, my obviously, to my favor than the other uh, – the other aspects of it right so when you moved so you moved to you moved to california and was it a official uh permanent move or is it kind of back and forth how, how is it for you right now and your lifestyle with training and everything um it's official man i live in a pretty nice apartment complex out there uh in san jose i'm like four miles away from the gym yeah and uh yeah man i'm actually about to sign my next year lease in august so I mean, I have another year out there for sure. I don't know if I'll spend my whole life out there mm. just because how, you know, I'm an Oklahoma boy. So yeah. I love the Midwest. But while I'm training and trying to get to where I want to be, that's where I have to live. So right now it's pretty uh, it's pretty um, standard that I had to live out there. Well, congratulations on staying another year. I mean, I'm sure it's, it's all going to benefit you at the end of the day with your MMA career. So what's it like being back home? Uh, you're you're in Oklahoma right now, right? No, I'm actually in Dallas, Texas. Oh, you're I, in uh, Texas. Okay. Yeah, so. I have uh, I have a girlfriend who lives in Dallas, Texas. So we we kind of do the long distance thing right now. Um, yeah, so I'm here for a day, and then uh, my brother's actually picking me up, and we're gonna head to Tulsa in the morning. So awesome, man. So what's it like? Uh, what's it like being back? Uh, <laughs> in the midwest versus the california life tell me a little bit about how that's been going for you man it is hot out here <laughs> it's like 102 here today right uh where i live man it's, it's like 77 all day every day so yeah it's definitely uh i'm still a little used to it you know i haven't been gone that long but it is uh it is it is extremely hot here right now so right so with the with the MMA scene today, um, tell me a little bit about how you got uh, how you got into this promotion. Talk about the promotion itself and your upcoming fight. Let's let's hear about this uh, this upcoming weekend for you. So, I was uh, I've been trying to find fights for like two months, and we've hit up a couple different promotions, mm -hmm. um, and, and a lot of them were kind of slow playing it. I uh, I, I contacted a guy named Dale Cook from Tulsa, Oklahoma which uh, I didn't know, but my roommate that I live with is actually from Oklahoma as well, and he told me about it. So we just contacted him, and he got on the ball pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and then it's, it's called XFN, Extreme Fight Night. Um, it's a pretty good little promotion in Oklahoma. And so far, man, they've just taken good care of me and made sure everything that uh, I've needed is going smoothly. Um so yeah, man, it's a uh, it's it's a good opportunity for me to go back home, fight in front of a bunch of fans, get that adrenaline back in me, get that competitiveness, you know, going again. And uh, man, I'm just excited, man. I've always I've always been a competitor, and I love competing. And this is a little different. Yeah. But at the same time, it is uh, it is competition, so I'm excited. That's awesome, man. So let me let me ask you, what's the what's the mindset like for you right now? I mean, you've been on the biggest stages in the world as far as wrestling goes. What's it like uh, being able to step inside a cage and train mentally for that? What have you done to prepare for that in that aspect? Um, I've sparred a lot of rounds. Yeah. Um, I've sparred with some of the UFC champs that we have. I've sparred with guys in our gym that are absolutely killers. Um, it's just confidence now. It's just, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to going and, and fighting people now. So yeah. as far as uh, guys that are at high level. Um, and as far as right now, man, I'm just relaxing. My weight's yeah. good. Um, I'm just staying on top of my nutrition. A lot of water. Right now I'm sitting at a pool, man. I've, <laughs> I'm just, right now I'm just very relaxed. Yeah. Uh, I'll kick it into gear probably uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I'll, I'll kick it into the whole uh that right state of mind that I need to be in. So. Right. Yeah. So, so Kyle, with with training with all those guys like DC, and I've seen you train with Khabib Nurmagomedov and all those guys. 
uh, how how do they treat you? Like, like what's it like for you as just a, a normal, you know, MMA aspiring fighter to be training with these monsters? What do they see you as, and how do they view you as? Um, well, Tuesdays, every Tuesday we have wrestling practice. <laughs> so uh, I think I've learned a lot of re- I've earned a lot of respect in those days. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I think uh, I think those guys, man, they just appreciate. Uh, you know, I come in, I work hard. I, I don't I don't slow play anything. I, I uh, I'm pretty serious and on top of my stuff. You know, I don't get in their ways, but when they when they need me, I'm there. Right. Um, but as far as the respect, I think the respect came from uh, my wrestling is at a very high level. Yeah. And you know, compared to a lot of the guys in the MMA world, and um, I think they just respect that they know that that took a lot of work to do so i just think i got their respect a little uh through my wrestling for sure and let's talk a little bit about your coaches uh tell me who your primary coaches are who you train with the most and who's going to be in your corner this weekend so i got uh my coaching staff is Javier mendez yep. uh bob cook uh rosendo sanchez the ultimate fighter uh, boxing coach and then Hav Mendez, the kickboxing ultimate fighter coach of this past season. Yep. Um, Hav is the head coach of the American Kickboxing Academy. He's coached guys like Luke Rockhold, Daniel Cormier, Habib, uh, Frank Shamrock, I and mean, we can go down the list. Yeah, the cream of the crop in UFC and yeah. etc. cetera, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's my, uh, that's my head guy. Um, I have a boxing coach who's Daniel Cormier's boxing coach now that – helps me out with more of the boxing aspect of everything yeah um, bob cook he'll be there at my fight and rosendo sanchez um kind of got to get to the bigger shows to get hob in your corner but yeah for sure that's that's a that's a huge accomplishment and not it's unheard of for guys like uh in your uh, situation to be you know zero and zero record mma and you got a guy like javi mendez coming in and training you so that's that's awesome man yeah, I got uh, the coaching staff I have, man. I really think it's the best in the world. Also, forgot to say that my grappling coach, Ron Kessler. Okay. Um, two-time black belt, world champ or whatever. Um, he's done a lot. He's helped me out a lot on my ground game. I've got really good at, at submissions and things like that, too. Through now, him, so. now, as far as wrestling goes, is it do you, do you guys have a wrestling coach at AK? Does, um, does somebody take over as, like, head honcho? Is it, like, a Daniel Cormier or – What's it like for that? I mean, we kind of, we, we, obviously, I mean, honestly, we kind of split days. Right. Uh, you know, we have uh, Daniel Cormier, that, you know, Olympian, uh, Sean Bunch, world team member. Yeah. And uh, if them two aren't there, I kind of just run a wrestling practice. My MMA wrestling's good, but I still don't know all the details. Mm-hmm. So if I, if I run a wrestling practice, it's getting your stance, and we actually do a wrestling practice. <laughs> Those guys do more of an MMA wrestling, so... So you we try switch off. you try to emulate that old school Cowboys uh, wrestling practice, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try. So tell me a little bit about how that relationship has gone for you after graduating and being done with Oklahoma. How's it? How's it treating you now? Do you ever? Do you stick? Um, you, you know, talk to the guys that you're teammates with. You know, John Smith. How's the relationship with everybody back back there? Man, I talk to all my teammates. Um, I, I actually, uh, they come to me for advice a lot of the times now. Um, man, when I was in school, I was, I was, uh, I was pretty much, you know, just the guy on the team that everyone could talk to because I was, you know, pretty, uh, simple and, and, and would, would go along with what they had to say and yeah, still talk to them. Uh, and I think that earned the, their respect a lot. Um, as far as the coaches, I still talk to the coaches. Um, not a lot. But, you know, we do have conversations. Sure. Um, I still talk to one of my better friends, Alex Stanger, all the time. Um, that's my guy, man. We, uh, we yeah, you talk, talk about, about his career, too. He's, I mean, he's he's a monster, yeah, man. man. That, dude is, that dude is a monster. He uh, he definitely has a very bright future, I think. So For sure. So when you uh, go back to Oklahoma this weekend, how many, how many guys are – coming out to root for Kyle Crushman. Well, what's the crowd like for you? Man, so far, I think we've actually sold my whole section out. Wow. 
So I don't know how many seats that is, but that's I good. Hey, either not, way, man, it's good either way. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I get. Last time I heard, it was like we sold seventy tickets. That was like two weeks ago, and wow. a lot of people keep asking me. So there's no telling, man. Um, I know a lot of my teammates are going to be there. Awesome. Um, so, so we'll see. Uh, as far as uh, this fight goes, tell me about you know. Tell me. What made you? Are you? Were you fighting uh, middleweight or welterweight? Wait, what, what weight class are we going into? I'm actually gonna fight at a catch weight. Okay. Uh, a lot of the guys, man, they they uh, a lot of the 170 pounders uh, said no, so I actually had to go up a little bit. I'm fighting a guy who uh, wants to weigh 182 pounds. Okay. So he'll be a little bit bigger, but I mean, I've fist fought bigger guys. Than <laughs> And wrestled a lot bigger guys too. Yeah, so, I wrestled some big dudes. Man. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about <clears throat> uh, how that training goes as far as uh, fight week for you. I mean, obviously it's a catch weight, but how's the weight going? The weight cut? Um, how's how's your body feeling? Uh, man, I got a guy named Mike Dolce. Dolce oh, died. There you go. Yep. Um, I became good friends with him when GS one Johnny Hendricks was uh, training for GSP. Yep. And, uh, man, ever since, we just had a very good relationship. He helps me out. He sends me tricks. Uh, man, I've never felt this good in my life as far as uh, coming down to – I mean, I'm not going all the way down to weight, but right. I'm still going down about 25 pounds. Yeah. Um, but I've never felt this good. So Awesome. Shout out to Dolce. He's doing a great job with all of his guys, and he's helped me out tremendously. For sure. So what what's the goal for uh, fighting in the future? Do you plan on dropping down the welterweight 170, or what are you thinking? Yeah, I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely fight at 170. 170? Yeah. Awesome, man. So let's hear about this opponent. Do, do you know anything about your opponent upcoming fight? Um, any any background info on him? I know he. Uh, I know he likes to do a little jujitsu. Okay. Um, he's a tall guy, six three. Um, but man, I, I really don't know much about him besides that. I've watched film on him a little bit, but as far as that, man, I just my mindset is I'm about to go step in a cage and they're gonna lock that thing on me. <laughs> and then the winner, the, yeah. the guy who loses, is either gonna be out or something's gonna be hurting. So right. So, as far as uh, you know, MMA goes. What's what's been a better satisfaction for you, training in MMA or training in wrestling? Like, what do you appreciate more looking at it for right now? Man, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. Um, I uh, I really appreciate wrestling, man. That shit was hard. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, the hardest thing out college, there. Man, yeah. To this day, I don't. I don't think anything's going to be as hard as wrestling five years in college. Right. People just don't understand, man. They'll they'll never understand what these kids go through. Especially and where you're wrestling at. I mean, Oklahoma State. I mean, that's yeah, no the joke. The thing is, man, those guys, these kids, they don't have money. They don't have nutritionists, and you're cutting 30, 35 pounds to make a team, and you're doing it twenty seven times in, uh, a year. Every make other weekend, basically. Yeah. So. Man, what those what these kids go through, it it'll, it'll never nothing will ever be as hard as that. I mean, as far as MMA goes, yeah, the training is hard. You know, fighting people is is, is definitely uh, an adrenaline rush. Yeah. But, man, like Dan Gable said, once you wrestle, man, everything else. Is <laughs> Amen to I that. Think that's a very true statement. So, uh, besides just talking about MMA, and you know. I did want to get a little bit into wrestling, but the the real reason why I wanted to reach out to you, obviously you've been one of the bad boys in wrestling for Oklahoma and whatnot, but I think you got a, another side to you that not a lot of people talk about or hear about, and that's your family and how much you value that and your brother, your little brother. So I, yeah. I, I hope you don't mind, but I really wanted to talk more about that than anything because i think it's an incredible story your brother has and your relationship with him so if you could yeah. shine some light on it for us yeah man uh i got two brothers one sister a mom and a dad um in my whole life man they've had my back you know like I, like you said i haven't had always had the best reputation you know uh, and uh but you know 
anytime something's ever happened to me, they never left me. They never left my side. So right. and my loyalty to them is, is crazy. Um, my brother, Brian, who wrestled me in college, um, we were five years old, woke up, couldn't walk. Uh, he had to have surgery. He was in the hospital for like 320 days. Um, they said he would never walk again. And my family, man, we lived in a one bedroom apartment at the time. We didn't even have money to, to even pay for rehab. So we just bought a pool and made him swim every day. So wow. he ended up being able to walk. Uh, he ended up being a state champ in high school. He also had another major surgery when we were freshmen to get his, uh, all that stuff taken out of his spine. Yeah. Um, Ended up being a state champ his senior year. Wrestled all five, oh, four years at Oklahoma State. He graduated a year early. He took uh, 24 hours in one semester to be able to go and wow. make money so we could uh, he could help me out my last year as far as money and help our family out a little bit. Yeah. But, man, uh, yeah, we just, my family, we're very close. And, uh, you know, it's just something that I've always take, took pride in and, that's something that will never change about me. For sure. And that's what I thought was important about you is no matter what people say about you, you know, you're always going to show that side where you're going to care about your family hands down. And so um, for you, what's your family uh, feeling about you fighting and everything? How, how's that for them? My dad, I think. My dad seems really excited. Okay. My, my, my brothers are excited. Yeah. My mom's nervous as hell. <laughs> She was, she was telling me she don't know if she's even going to come. She might just stand in the back by the bar and, and wait for me to get my hand raised. Oh, no. <laughs> but the the person who's the most excited is my baby sister. Oh, really? Yeah, Tell me a little bit about is, her. She is a Division One softball player. Oh, wow. Where at? She, uh, Central, U, UCA in oh, Arkansas. Oh, awesome. Yeah, so she plays, uh, plays softball there. Took fourth in uh, uh, track in high school in and the 106A, which is the biggest wow. uh, class in Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, she's very, very fast, very athletic. She's a stud, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but, yeah, she uh, she's the most excited. She <laughs> calls me every day about it. So That's awesome. And so all the, are all of them going to be at your fight? Yeah, man. I All my closest friends, my, all my family, mom's side, dad's side. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, girlfriend, everybody, man. Everybody's going to be there. It's going to be a, a, a fun little event, man. And if, and if I can get the win and get out of there and we're having a little after party, it should be fun for everybody. So, Awesome, man. So, Kyle, um, got a couple more minutes with you. Once again, I just want to tell you I appreciate uh, you being on the podcast today. It's been a pleasure hearing from you and seeing what you're about to do in uh, MMA. Uh, as far as the current state of MMA, um, what's what's the goal? What's the future looking like for Kyle Crushmer? What's what's his aspirations looking like? Man, my aspirations is, is just man. And wrestling, I always had a high goal, um, but I to me, man, I just I just want to be as good as I can. Yes. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I'm going to work as hard as I can. Um, obviously, I want to be a UFC champ. But uh, at the end of the day, I just want people to realize, you know, that I worked my ass off my whole life to, to be able to compete at a high level. Yeah. Uh, I want to make a lot of money. I want to be able to support my family, buy my mom a house, buy dad a truck, hmm. you know, have a nice family of my own and live on a beach or a lake somewhere. Yeah, for sure. Um, I got... Couple more questions, but one of the biggest ones I wanted to ask, as I've noticed more and more throughout this podcast talking to you, you're a very chill uh, personality. You're very mellow. What's uh, where did that, where does that come from? How does that, how does that come about? Because you, it, you're wrestling when you watch you, when you, when people watch Kyle Crutchman wrestle, you know it's it's nuts. Like it's it's intense. It's aggressive. But talking to you now, you just seem opposite. So where does that come from? Man, I don't know. I've just, I've people just. That's what I'm saying. People just never. They just stereotype me, man. I'm any of my any of my teammates in college. Anybody you you talk to that really know me, man. I've just always been a very relaxed, chill. Yeah. Just mellow. Until until you need me, or until someone you know steps over that line that I draw. Yeah. 
um, yeah, man, I'm, I don't know. It comes from, I think a lot of, a lot of it comes from my, my brother, Brian. He's a very chill person, very relaxed. Yeah. And man, we just, we've always just been very mellow. We've been in big crowds our whole life, had a lot of friends, seen a lot of things, made a lot of mistakes. Fixed and you've been through mistakes. experience. I mean, I'm sure that yeah, a man. lot of it has to play with experience and being humbled by training with guys like DC every day and Khabib and all those guys at AKA. It's, I mean, I can't imagine what AKA has done for you as far as just a, being a person in life, you know? Yeah, man, you see, uh, you know, a guy like Daniel Cormier who, who essentially has, pretty much has it all, man. He had, you know, yeah. the money, had a great family. Um, he's a caring person. Yeah. And, you know, you see a guy that's at that pinnacle and, and uh, you know, you, you kind of strive to be like him in a way. You know, there's uh, a lot of good things about that man that, you know, people don't see that I see every day. And, yeah. Um, it's just very humbling, man. I I, uh, I don't want to be I don't want to be that guy that people, you know, don't want their kids around and right or you know kids to listen to. You know, I just want to be a positive role model for whoever I need to, uh, whoever looks up to me or whatever. And then at the end of the day, I step into a cage, beat someone's ass, and then walk off. <laughs> well put. Well put. Uh, so uh, with DC, uh, I don't mean to keep bringing him up, but it's it's You're awesome. Good, it, it's awesome that you you guys have such a personal relationship. I see on Instagram and social media, you guys are always together, joking around. Um, for you, uh, what are your thoughts on his upcoming fight uh, against Stipe? Man, um, from what I see and and you know and watching this guy train and his wrestling and his, you know, just, I mean, this guy's, I mean, he's the greatest, man. He really is. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, he's had a couple of hiccups in his career, but the hiccups, man, they, they were caused by, uh, to me, man, that guy cheated. And, yeah. man, at the end of the day, you just see a guy who's willing to do anything and everything to be great. And uh, That's why know, he's champ no, right now, you know? Yeah, there's, there's no easy, this is no easy task, man, you know, Credit Stipe, that guy's a monster too. You know, he's, you know, he's not really a big, you know, shit talker or anything. Yeah. Um, so, but to me, man, I'm gonna go with my boy DC. Um, I think people are gonna be very surprised and shocked. Well, not surprised. I think they're gonna be a little bit more uh, self aware that this guy really is the uh, real is deal, the greatest of all time. For sure. And how about for you, Mr. Kyle Crutchmer? What's the what's the prediction for this weekend? What's the fight prediction? What are what we? What are we? What's the goal? What are we looking to get? Man, I'm going for the tech fall. Oh, here we go. Yeah, we'll go for the <laughs> go for the wrestling analogy tech fall. Okay. Um, man, so, what I, does I, that equivalent to an MMA terms then? A knockout? Are we talking a knockout? No, or are we a lot talking of takedowns? <laughs> a lot of takedowns. Okay. Uh, I'll stay in a bang a little bit. Yeah. I'll stay in a bang, but right now, man, I'm just trying to take as least amount of damage as I can. Sure, it's smart. Um, and, I mean, like I take guys down at the high level that know what's coming. So, right. Um, I don't. I just don't see this guy being able to stop any takedowns, so why would I not go out there and do that, you know? So, For that's sure. my game plan. That's what my coach's game plan. But at the end of the day, I have some I have some things and some tricks that I have too. So awesome! Well, we look forward to watching them, uh, Kyle. My last question as I close out the Go Earn It podcast: uh, When somebody says Kyle, you have to go earn it. What is what does the three words "go earn it" mean to you? Man, it's it's the it's the work you put behind the scenes. It's the work when no one sees. Man, it's uh, the late night drills at twelve thirty uh, at night with your boy Alex Derringer. It's the yeah. Waking up at 5.30 a.m. to run three miles just because you know it's hard, man. That's that's the kind of stuff it takes to get to the next level and, and stay at the highest level. Well put. Kyle, where can listeners find you? Where can we follow you? Uh, this is your time to give your plugs and shout-outs. Man, it's uh, very easy. All my social media is the same thing. It's at Kyle Crutchmer, K-Y-L-E-C-R-U-T-C-H-M-E-R. Um, I'm on all platforms, man. I, I, I'm... I believe in your, you have to network yourself, and um, those are my platforms, man. For sure. Kyle, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Good luck this weekend, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it.